Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing another episode of Indie Gear. Today we'll be covering the boots. Uh, for those of you who have been watching my Indie Gear series, you know the routine. For those that don't, uh, we'll be starting with the very cheapest option, and then going up to the very best option, and then I will show you what, uh, what I have and why I bought it. So, for starters, um, you can find all sorts of good stuff on eBay if you're not looking for, you know, diehard screen accuracy. You can look up hiking boots. You can look up work boots. You can look up adventure boots. Uh, if you're lucky, you can look up indie boots and find some really good stuff as well. Um, a lot of people kind of fudge on the boots a little bit because they don't show up in photos unless it's a full body shot and you can get away with a whole lot of stuff when it comes to you know footwear a lot of the time so um, with that being said if you're gonna go cheap with the boots there's a couple of things that you wanna at least try and get right uh, here are my boots over here we'll be talking about these more in depth in a few minutes but um, the main thing that uh, people are going to see when you're wearing an indie boot is this front stitch right here. If you can get a boot that has that stitch, you're already halfway there and your boots will at least look halfway decent. Um, me personally, I wouldn't go with any boot that doesn't have something along here just because that's, that's like indie's trademark. Now if you can find a boot that has that, the second thing you're going to want to do, uh, this one doesn't have that, so I will put this one down for a minute, is find the heel stitch. I'm not sure if this is going to show up on camera or not, but there's a heel stitch that goes from here to here on the boot. And that is also very uh, characteristic of a good indie boot. So if you can find the toe section and the heel section, odds are you're going to have something that at least looks halfway decent. And if you shop around for a little bit, you can probably find something like that for $50 or less. So, um, there, there are some good options out there if you hunt. Uh, before I shot this video, I just googled Indiana Jones boot just to see what it would come up with. Um, every once in a while you find a company that makes something that looks like a legit Indiana Jones boot, but it seems like they're always coming and going, and so I'm not really going to mention any of them in this video. For the indie gurus that are watching this video, um, please leave some stuff in the comments for uh, potential cosplayers to click on those on those links and, and find a decent boot if you can find something under $100. Um, for under for over $100, you know, you might as well get something that's, that's really going to hit it out of the ballpark. So, with that being said, we're going to go to some of the more expensive options here. This, I've mentioned this in many, many videos before, is going to be the Todd's Costume Boot. This, in my opinion, is a really, really good boot. Uh, this is the very first screen-accurate indie boot that I bought. Now, as I showed you earlier, it does not have the heel right here. But, it's got everything else. It's, it's got... An, um, a really nice sole on it. I got these resold, by the way. Uh, I have heard that right out of the box, the Todd's costume boots don't have a very good sole on them. So I got these used. Uh, the sole seemed fine to me, but it was just about worn off on the heel. So I just took it down to a shoe repair place and got a new heel put on it for 20 bucks. And I've been wearing these for years and years and years. Uh, they've they've been to Disneyland. They've been on a million gazillion different adventures and they've still held up really, really good. I mean, the leather is, is nice, uh, good quality. It's a good heavy boot for those of you that want uh, the weight. Now, like the Alden 405s, which is the actual boot used in the movie, is an Alden 405. We'll get to those in a little bit. Uh, it's a heavy boot with very, very little padding in it. So what I did was I have three insoles in this thing to try and give you enough foot padding that you can wear this thing all day long and it doesn't kill your feet. Unfortunately, like most of the other uh, products from Todd's Costumes, 
this will go in and out of stock quite a bit and most of the time it is out of stock so if you can find a pair uh, last I checked on Todd's costumes they were selling for a hundred bucks if you can get these for a hundred bucks that is a heck of a steal buy them immediately so um, the next option is going to be uh, this boot actually this is the adventurers boot from Wested uh, they just started making these a couple years ago, and they've been hugely popular. I finally picked up a pair, and now I can see uh, why they're, they're such a big deal. Uh, the sole on these is incredible. Looks just like it does in the film. It's got all the proper stitching, as I was showing earlier. The color might be off by a little bit uh, for you sticklers out there. But I'm guessing it's going to fade over time. As you can see, it's already got a whole bunch of scuffs and everything on the toe and on the heel back here. Uh, these are the boots that I've worn during my Indiana Jones fan film. And I did all of my own stunts. So these have seen a ton of action already. Uh, they still look great. They require zero inserts. Uh, we did a fight scene where I wore these for eight hours straight, just getting knocked around and pushed into the dirt and all sorts of stuff. And I just wore these all day long and uh, they're fantastic. Uh, my next trip to Disneyland, I plan on wearing these as well. Uh, really, really good boot. I can't say enough good stuff about them. Uh, for those that watch this channel, everyone knows that I'm a big West Ed fan, and there's a reason for that. Uh, this boot goes for around $150 um, in U.S. money. It goes, it goes for 100 pounds on their website, which I think goes to about 120, and then of course you gotta pay for shipping, so. Uh, obviously, it's going to vary a little bit between when you go and look at the website and when you see this film because, you know, currencies change all the time. But, you know, you're pretty much guaranteed to get this boot for about $175, and it's a heck of a steal for $175. Um, next time I order from Wested, in fact, every order I place from Wested from here on out, I'm probably just going to get another pair of these boots so that I'm not paying extra shipping with whatever else that I end up ordering from them. I would like to eventually get the Rocketeer jacket from them, but uh, it's a little spendy, so that's probably a little ways down the road, but I suspect these are going to last me a long freaking time, uh, just based on the wear and tear I've already put on them and how well it's held up. So, yeah, um, this is the boot that I would recommend people buy. Like I said, the color on it is, is not quite what it should be, but that is really my only beef with this boot. Other than that, all the stitching on it just looks fantastic. Uh, the cushioning is great. The construction is great. Nothing else bad to say about this boot, especially at that price point. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, the next boot on the list is one that I found while I was uh, doing research for this video. It's a Fry boot. F-R-Y-E. A Fry indie boot that you can find on Amazon. And it's about $300. A little bit... Uh, over 300 bucks. I think it was like 303 or something like that. But uh, I have never owned a pair, but they look fantastic. They look pretty much like this one, but the color is a little bit more like this. So if, if you're a stickler for the color on this boot, that fry boot might be right up your alley. Now, all I've got to go on is the picture that's on Amazon. So, you know, maybe the color is off by a little bit, but at the end of the day, the color is a little bit better than this one. Um, would I pay the extra $50 for it? No, probably not, especially since I'm a very loyal West Ed customer. But I'm just throwing the options out there. Some of you might want to go that route. Um, great looking boot. And then we get up to the Aldens. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Alden 405 was the boot that Harrison Ford wore in those movies. He specifically requested that boot, as a matter of fact and it turned out great. Um, they are still distributed by J. Crew, and uh, you can get an Alden 403 if you want to save some money. Alden 403s go for around $350, $400. Sometimes you can find one on eBay for less and uh, get a steal that way. Uh, the regular Alden 405 boot is around 500 bucks sometimes maybe even a little bit more. I have actually owned an Alden 405 boot, and I sold it. And the reason I sold it is because 
it kind of looks like the fry boot. It's kind of a combination between this boot and this boot. It's obviously it's got it's 100% screen accurate because it's the actual boot. But here's my problem with it. It's 500 bucks for one. The other is it's a really really heavy boot. It's built like the Todd's costume boot where the thing just weighs a ton and it's got zero padding in it. So it's heavy. It's uncomfortable to wear. If you're going to wear it all day long, you're going to have to put three insoles in it, like I did on this boot here. And you can buy four pairs of these for that price. So I'm just kind of like, eh. I can't really recommend that boot. But I'm putting it in this video because if, if you want a 100% exactly what Harrison Ford wore, you got to go with the Alden 405s. And there are a lot of people on the Indie Forum on Facebook that wear the Alden 405s and love them. It is a very, very well-made boot. It's rugged. One pair, if you take care of it, will probably last you your entire life. But 500 bucks. So you can just kind of pick your poison. Those are the best options out there by far. Uh, like I said, sometimes you'll find something else, and if somebody finds something like that, please uh, put a link down in the comments for other people to follow. But for my money, I'm going with the Westhead for the rest of my Indiana Jones career, however long that ends up being. I just love this boot. It's super de duper comfortable. It's a fraction of the price of an Alden 405. It's held up great, and I have just trashed this boot. And, it, and it's still just fantastic. And the more it gets scuffed up, the more it looks like an actual indie boot. So that's fine by me. Um, the color, in another few years, the color may match this over here. Um, this was actually a much darker color when I originally got it out of the box. And it's already faded a little bit. And, and it looks more and more like an indie boot the more I wear it, which also looks is just fantastic. Um, I have a full review of this West Ed boot also on this channel. If you want, it's like a five-minute review of just the ins and outs. It's, it's like an unboxing type thing. I don't generally do those, but uh, I do review some West Ed products on this, on this uh, channel. So if you're interested in that, you can go check it out. I do not have a review for the Todd's costume boot. I didn't really see the point when it's just so hard to get this boot these days. Um... I am planning on putting these up for sale on eBay. In fact, I think they're already on there. Um, looking to get 100 bucks out of them. They've been resold. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested in that, I can send you the link or whatever. Um, sizing. I almost forgot. Sizing is going to be... These boots tend to run a little bit big. Um, I wear a size 10. If you order a size 10, it's going to be too big. And that seems to be the case with all the indie boots I've ever ordered, including the 405s. I think it's because they're coming from the UK and the sizes there are a little bit different. But um, the 405s, I ordered a 9. Um, these ones from Wested are a 9.5. And, and the Todd's costume boot is also a 9. And all those boots fit me just fine. So, um... If, if you're going to go off-brand or something, be really, really careful with the sizing, unless you're in the UK and you're kind of used to that. But, uh, yeah, for people shopping on Amazon or thinking about getting a West Ed, if you're going to get a West Ed, get a, a half size down from what you normally wear, and it should fit you perfectly. If you're lucky enough to get a, a set of Todd's, go one full size down. Um, with the West Ed, or the, not the West Ed, but the... Uh, if you're going to go all out and get the 405s, I would go with a half size. Half size less than what you normally wear. So, yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything in this video. Uh, next video, we're going to be doing the satchel. And we've got a couple of good options for a nice satchel that uh, we'll be talking about. So, uh, as usual, thanks all. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.